So we're going to start with a growing crisis at the southern border of the United States. A large number of asylum seekers are continuing to cross over from Mexico. Let's go straight to Al Jazeera's Heidi Jo Castro. You've been covering this for us. You're at e in Eagle Pass, Texas, uh, just near the Rio Grande. The people are crossing. I've just been looking at your shot and been seeing some pretty dramatic pictures just moments ago. What's happening? That's right, Cyril. These migrants have been through the waters. They have been waiting, some of them overnight, and then for hours underneath this blazing sun, and they are emerging with the help of U.S. Border Patrol through this thicket of razor wire fencing that was put here by the state of Texas, and they are delicately, step by step, taking their first steps <clears throat> on U.S. soil. This is a very emotional moment for many. We saw some praying. We saw some hugging, kissing their children, kneeling down to touch the soil with their fingers for the first time. And it is very difficult for many. Just earlier, a man collapsed after emerging from these wires. The heat exhaustion here is a real threat. These are people who haven't had water, some of them overnight until now. And we're just desperately begging for this assistant to be allowed to cross through this razor wire. These are mostly adults you are seeing uh, emerging now, many telling me that they're from Venezuela, having transversed many, many miles, kilometers of dangerous terrain to arrive at this point. But also, there are some who have children. Many of the children were picked up actually by boats, by U.S. border agents not having to climb up the banks and the razor wire. And now another child is actually coming. We're here. You know, these migrants also helping each other, prioritizing the well-being of those who seem the sickest or those who have children. And it's difficult. You're seeing people getting their backpacks, clothing caught in this razor wire who that is indeed very sharp. And, Ciro, this, this is the sort of like the, the climax of their months-long journey leading them to this point. So despite the dire conditions that many find themselves in, most, once they see us, they wave, they smile, they say that this is the moment they feel like that they've made it. Yeah, Heidi, if you get a chance to, to talk to anybody like you tried to do yesterday, <clears throat> if you get a chance to, to ask them a question where they're from, how they're doing, please go right ahead and we'll just follow your lead on this. These are the same people you were showing us last hour and they were on the other side of the barbed wire and they weren't able to move because there's no way for them to come up, do what they're doing now, to come up on the embankment. So this is... This is what's a little confusing when, you know, you look at it from the other side of the world, is that it looks like U.S. authorities are on the one hand trying to deter them from coming in, and then at some point when there are too many people and the situation just gets, gets too dramatic, too dire, especially with cameras watching, they'll go ahead and cut up the barbed wire and, and help them in. Yes, that's exactly what is happening. It's this kind of push and give. Once the pressure here is so high, that is when this humanitarian response is elicited. And I will try to ask some of these people. Hola, ¿cómo están ustedes? Bien, gracias a Dios. How, how do you feel having had this? Bien, bastante cansado, pero bien. He says he's really, really tired, mm. but he's well. ¿De dónde es usted? Venezuela. He's from Venezuela. ¿Y por qué veniste? Muchos motivos, en realidad. Situación del país y nuevos horizontes, una mejoría. Muchas gracias. Well, I just asked him a loaded question. I said, why yeah. did you come? And he said, many reasons, every reason to risk that for, for this, to risk this, you know, for the opportunity to emerge from a dire economy, for the political persecution that they feel they're enduring in Venezuela. Um, a lot of these people are also emerging in worse conditions. People, you know, just really uh, having gone through this heat um, and, you know, just hobbing, hobbling, um, trying to pour water on their children as, as quickly as they can reach it. It's a very tough situation. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, the, the last words in his answer when you asked him why he was coming was new for new horizons. And look, this question that you asked him is the same question the U.S. is going to be asking him, yeah. I assume, within, within moments, right? He needs to have a reason to be there. And the reason, the legal reason that, that would allow him to stay would be if he manages to get asylum. How would that work? Walk us through the next moments for those people. 
Yeah, most of these people are going to walk a few more meters to what is a, a shaded area where they're going to be processed by U.S. Border Patrol. They submit their names, their identities, and they will be asked, you know, they will be asked what, what their intention is. And they have to say that they want to uh, claim asylum in the United States. And then the next step is to screen whether there is uh, a, a likely chance that they'll even qualify to submit for asylum. And it's a very difficult hurdle to, to, to overcome, legally speaking. You have to not only face persecution in your home country, but you have to be from a specific, specific protected group, race, religion, nationality, social status, and they have to have the documents to prove that. Now, speaking with many of these individuals who are from Venezuela, there is a special case in the sense that the Biden administration just last week uh, extended temporary protections to Venezuelans, to many Venezuelans who are already in this country. Actually, they had to have arrived months ago. Uh, that is due to the political situation in Venezuela. So there's also sort of a gamble here. The people who are arriving newly, they're hearing what many are calling disinformation, saying that they're being allowed to stay in the United States, when really that is the, the end of a long uh, political process that may or may not turn out the way that they want. But it is true that Venezuelans who are in, in this country already for several months, they can, they can apply for temporary protections, <clears throat> meaning they can stay at least for the time being. And all these other Venezuelans following their footsteps are hoping to have the same end result. Heidi, it's absolutely remarkable what you're showing us live. These are people who have come, some of them from South America, others from Central America, and they've obviously faced a great many dangers, heat and exhaustion, just one of them, uh, some of them, smugglers, obviously, is another, and now they are where they've been trying to go all along in the U.S., and now they're going to have to face the U.S. asylum system and try to navigate that. And as you've explained to us in uh, the past few hours, many of them will be turned back. That's Heidi Jo Castro reporting uh, from the U.S.-Mexico border. Thank you.